Hi everyone, it's Katie and I'm here today to do a double review for you. Um, if you followed me at all, you might be aware that one of my favourite oracle decks um, is the Enchanted Map Oracle by Colette Baron reed um, I got this, I think, November last year and it has quickly become a go-to favourite for me. It's a beautiful and readable deck um, and it's also really approachable and grounded and it really seems to give me the messages that I need when I need them. Um, but in a really gentle, supportive way that encourages me to take specific action. So when I saw the map by Colette Baron reed um, the book that kind of inspired the Oracle deck, I found this at the library and of course, um, because I love the Oracle deck so much, I had to give this one a go. It did take me a whole month to read, um, which is strange for me. I usually read much quicker than that. Um, but it was a really, really good book and I wanted to share with you a little bit about why I think this book is so powerful. So firstly I'll just say that this is not a companion guide to the um, Enchanted Map Oracle deck. There is a small little guidebook that comes with the deck, but this doesn't specifically reference the deck at all. However, there are a lot of names and places and people and characters in this book that have been put into the Oracle deck. And because they're explained at length in the book, I've really come to have a better understanding of what the artist and the creator were intending with these cards. And so that has really deepened my connection and my use of this deck. Simply put, this book is basically narrative therapy meets shadow work. Basically, narrative therapy is about creating a story. Um, so if there is a feeling that we're struggling with, we create a story around that feeling so that we can engage with it on a more perhaps objective or mindful or productive way. And shadow work is the process of approaching and understanding and then integrating the rejected, broken, shamed parts of ourselves, parts of our psyche, um, so that we can heal and have a better understanding of ourselves. So if we take those two things and put them together, a lot of what this book is about is using narrative therapy to create a story so that we can do the shadow work in perhaps a little bit more of a user-friendly sort of way, which makes the shadow work process, which can be a little bit elusive, I think, at times. Um, you know, when we talk about shadow work and doing shadow work, like what does that actually involve? This is kind of a guide to um, starting on that path. Um, things to look for and how we can go about approaching different parts of our psyche and acknowledging and becoming aware of different things that might be problematic that we need to look at and how we can look at those things. Um, I think this book has done that really, really well. Um, it doesn't really mention shadow work at all, but I really feel like that's a big part of what this book is doing. So the book basically walks us through different places that we might be in mentally and emotionally. Um, different characters we meet on our journey um, through our psyche and also different objects that we or symbols um, that can help us on that on our journey as well and these are represented in the deck so a big part of the book is learning to identify where we are and by that she really means the emotional landscape we find ourselves in so for example there's the dry desert and she really gets you to kind of think about what this would feel like and what sort of things you can see and hear and feel in this place. Another example is the storm fields and another is the ghost lands. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of what those places would mean. They're a description and a visualization to put to an emotion. And again, it's that narrative therapy coming in. It's a way to visualize our emotions in a way that we can kind of is almost tangible so they don't seem so big and elusive and scary and that when we start to look at our emo emotional state as a landscape as a place then we can start to really look for the lesson in a way that doesn't feel quite so encompassing um, and emotion is a very intangible thing um, it can be really hard to even put a name to our emotion sometimes so when we describe or visualize our emotional state as a place it can really help us take a step back and start to look for that lesson, start to look for what it is that we need to know. Another big part of this book is characters. Um, so we give names, um, we identify very clearly certain thought processes or patterns that we engage in. The one that she talks about the most throughout the book is goblins. And the goblins are a way of looking at uh, negative, doubtful thoughts, those anxieties and those um, negative self-talk that comes up around issues. And she says that 
We often run from the goblins or try to shut them up. But a goblin is always born from a wound, um, from a past hurt or pain. In their own strange way, they are trying to protect us. So when we come up against that negative self-talk and those doubts and those fears, she encourages us to view that as a goblin, to sit down with it and give it a name and to ask it, where are you from? When were you born? And that's when we can kind of start to understand why we're thinking this way and also how we can go about quieting the goblin and soothing it in its own way. She also talks about the importance of learning to love the goblin. Um, so not necessarily loving its message, obviously, but learning to accept those parts of ourselves that have been hurt and have been wounded and loving the goblin for the fact that it's trying to help, even if it's very misguided in the way that it's trying to do that. The gentle gardener is another one that she talks about quite a bit. And basically the gentle gardener is the character who nurtures any of the thoughts or behaviours that we engage in regularly. And Colette Baron reed talks about the fact that the gentle gardener is completely indiscriminatory. She will nurture and grow whatever we plant. So the idea is that if we're constantly planting seeds of anger or doubt or anguish, she's going to nurture those seeds and they're going to grow. Um, whereas if we plant seeds of positivity and love, that's what's going to grow um, and manifest more and more in our lives. Another character that she talks a lot about is um, called the sister of the gentle gardener and it is the bone collector. And this is where I think shadow work gets really serious in this book. And the bone collector is basically the guardian of our shadows. She's a guardian of the bones um, that we need to rescue, essentially. So through our discussions with the goblins and other characters, we can go to rescue these bones and to reclaim them as our own. She talks about how these bones were taken from us um, by the goblins when something bad happened or when we were hurt or wounded. And by visiting the bone collector and rescuing or reclaiming this bone of ours, this lost, wounded, hurt part of ourselves, reclaiming it, re-owning it, that is when we become more whole and that is how healing really starts to occur. Another aspect of this book that's really important in developing this narrative are items or objects or symbols. Um, so the first that we talk about is the compass. And that's really about coming back to heart centre. Um, she talks about finding true north. And that is our purpose, that is our um, solid line that we know is true for ourselves. So whenever we're lost in these various landscapes of emotion, we can pull out our compass and return to centre and focus on you know, our, our true goals and our true values, I think. The symbol that I really loved when she talked about um, was the talisman. And she describes this as being a symbol that we earn, um, that we claim when we have learnt the lessons or the messages from a particular landscape, a place. So once we've learnt the lesson of the desert or the ghost lands, we can create a symbol that will remind us of that message so that whenever we stumble back into this landscape or whenever we um, return to find ourselves returning to this place which will happen we can pull out this talisman so that whenever we return to that landscape we're reminded of our own power um, and reminded of what we have achieved in the past and that we can get through this moment in the back of the book she actually has listed um, a bunch of the magical places that she talks about in the book and I think even a few that she perhaps doesn't mention so much I really love that part. I think it makes it really easy to kind of reflect. And when we might be stuck in that uncertainty of um, and that jumble of emotion and not being able to place it, not being able to name it and describe it, kind of having a quick glance through this list um, might make that process a little easier. I do wish she'd done the same thing, a list at the end of the book of the characters that we meet, because I think there were quite a number, like quite a few of them. And I think that would have helped cement my understanding just that little bit more without having to reread the book or go through the book and flick through again. However, having the Oracle deck, I don't feel I need to do that because there are brief summaries of the characters and things that are in the Oracle deck in the Oracle deck guidebook. So although she does focus a lot on the more negative, unpleasant places or emotional landscapes that we might find ourselves, 
She does also mention that um, using this approach, creating a map for ourselves, can help us remember to really appreciate it when we find ourselves in those good, pleasant sort of locations because it's a reminder that we can't stay here forever. We have to keep moving throughout our map. We can't become stagnant. Um, and even in the positive things, there are lessons to be found. About halfway through the book, she introduces the Bone Collector. And I thought I'd read you a little bit about this character so that you can kind of get an idea of her approach. Um, because I think the Bone Collector is a really important, powerful character in this process. And I really like the way she's described. The Bone Collector is an old woman who lives on the island of Broken Dreams, a place accessible from the Valley of Loss and the Vandalized House. Whenever you're betrayed, mistreated, or taken advantage of, you lose something of value. It may be your innocence or your ability to trust. It may be your dignity or your sense of self-worth. The Bone Collector has a sacred junkyard where there is no junk, only what she has salvaged and what she knows has value. Others see only bones, dead and brittle. She sees their potential and can breathe life back into them. She does this by holding the bone to her lips and singing a magical song. Then she hands you the revived bone so that you can bring it back into your body. It will strengthen your skeleton and your spine, the structures that keep you together and moving forward on this adventure. Whenever you doubt your strength, remember that whatever the bone you may have lost or perhaps never claimed, you can find it on the island of broken dreams, where it was left by the goblin who was born from your pain. You can ask the bone collector to return it to you. Gladly, she will sing it back to life and celebrate its return with you. You have to ask though, as she springs to life only when you're willing to face the truth about the past. With the bone reincorporated into yourself, you become whole again. And so I think the bone collector and the narrative that we create around this character really for me sums up a big part of shadow work. And so that's why I think this book is really well done. It makes shadow work an idea that can seem elusive and even scary really approachable. It turns it into a story. A lot of this stuff I already kind of knew because I've done narrative therapy in the past. I've done a bit of shadow work but it just kind of combines those two in a really really beautiful profound way. Both are wonderful individually but together I think they really create something quite special um, and if you have the deck and haven't read the book um, I would certainly encourage you to. For me it really added to the experience of the deck. Um, and if you've read the book and really enjoyed it and you're into oracle decks, I think it's a great oracle deck. It really does kind of help you um, start to put together your own narrative and map. So two thumbs up from me. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and until next time, guys, much love. Bye.